Well, hello everyone and welcome to our presentation today. I was asked this in the last webinar we did, so I'm just gonna say this. These webinars that we're doing are based on the book that I wrote. And so today is part of chapter three. And you know, we always talk about the three basic questions. We talk about selfishness. So I know a number of you, I actually recognize a number of the names on here. So I know a number of you actually have copies of the book. So um, having said that, I will tell you that, that the, the examples I use in the webinars and the examples that are in the book are different, all right? And so we try to have everything absolutely new and up to date on the webinar because it's live versus a book being printed. So, if you don't have a copy of the book, you can go to sitetuners.com uh, forward slash martin dash bright slash book, or you can just go to amazon.com and just search for True Connections Relationship Marketing. All right, with all that being said, let's just dive into this now and talk about the agenda. Um, today's discussion is about persuasion. It is about understanding the motivations that your visitors have and serving up the content that is interesting or relevant to them and not just giving them content, but persuading them to take action via your calls to action. So your, your, your navigation, your content, your calls to action, all of these things have to be in sync for people to be persuaded to take the next step, regardless of what it is you're doing. Whether you're an e-commerce company, you're a lead gen company, um, you're a subscription-based company, it doesn't matter. Your visitors have their own preconceived ideas of what they're gonna find. You have to serve that up for them, and then you have to have a call to action that persuades them to take action. All right. So let's start with, you know, in the book, we talk about the three questions, you know, am I in the right place? You know, how do I feel about this site? And what am I supposed to do here? So a lot of today's discussion is focused on that last question. What am I supposed to do here? All right. So let's assume, and I think this is fair, let's assume that you've answered the question, am I in the right place? Because you've matched that upstream intent and your messaging with whatever page they land on. And they feel good about the page because you've got a modern design and, <clears throat> excuse me, and you've got um, uh, trust symbols and you've done all the things that we've talked about in some of the previous chapters. So at this stage, now it is making it easy for them to be able to decide what they're supposed to do next. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. of course, I've got a frog in my throat as we start this. So let's start with, we want your visitors to self-identify, all right? And so you need to have information trailheads for visual navigation. So let's talk about that. If, if, if any of you hike or, or have gone cross-country skiing, all right, like I used to do, there are trailheads at the beginning of a trail that basically says this trail goes this way, you know, it's, it's uh, five kilometers long, it's, it's you know, moderate terrain, it, it tells you things. So you can decide as a visitor, do I want to take this path or that path? So if you skied, hiked, or done any of those things, that helps. And visual navigation is another form of an information trailhead, all right? And all of these, interestingly enough, are a form of a call to action. All right, because calls to action aren't just buttons. Calls to action are ways to get people to, <clears throat> excuse me, to get people to um, identify, right? And, uh, and, you know, move forward. So let's also talk about one of the premises in the book. And that is that your visitors are selfish. Now we've talked about this before, you know, and I'm not going to belabor the point. We are all selfish because we are all literally animals. And, and so we are concerned about, um, you know, uh, food and shelter and procreation and all the things that animals are. And those take over our, our thought processes. And as we become more civilized, we're still selfish. And the example that I've used over and over again is, you, you know, you go to a conference, like the conversion conference that we talked about, 
and you meet people. And if it wasn't for the fact that they had a badge on, two minutes after you, you met them, you'd forget their name. And God forbid the badge, and we've seen this, where it turns over and you don't see the person's name, right? And you just got introduced, you forgot their name because we're selfish. So by having these trailheads, all right, and visual navigation and letting them self-identify, so it's all about them, they can go down the path that they care about. Because again, it's not about you and what you want on your website. It is about your visitor and what they want. So let's give you an example here. Uh, <laughs> and this is perfect timing because of these stupid headsets that I've been trying to do. Uh, I forgot that this example was in here. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, find the right headset. And so they've made the trailheads, uh, you know, for work or for personal use. So I could self-identify what it is I'm doing here. Now, we could argue that, you know, for work or for personal use, there's a crossover in today's world because you work from home and just kind of for personal use. But you'll notice that they qualified a little further in for work, headsets and speaker phones for the office or call center, right? And then for personal use, headsets and earbuds for calls, music, and sports. So they they are trying to give the visitor enough information to be able to decide which path to go down. Now, I might have done that visually. I might have not necessarily made the forward and the, for personal use, the, the bolder things. I might have made it more the informational side so that I can relate to it better. But the concept of, of talking to me, find a headset, and you notice they bolded this, engineered for you, for work or for personal use. This is visual navigation. This is a trailhead like we've been talking about. And they've tried to make this easy for somebody to be able to figure out are they in the right place. You know, Brother does something similar on their mobile. All right, so I blew this up. Uh, you know, products for home or products for business. Now, the thing is, I don't know what they all are. So I think this could have been done a little bit better, but at least it's a starting point to let people self-select. An obvious one that we see on e-commerce sites all the time is shop for men and shop for women, right? Now, up on the top, you'll notice they've got it in pink or blue. Uh, but the, in the middle of the picture here, they've got uh, shop women and shop men. And I would suggest that, that while that doesn't necessarily have to be pink or blue, um, it does need to pop off the page. If you notice on this, their shop women and shop men look the same as this is ASOS. Matter of fact, this is ASOS pops off the page even more. So your calls to action, while you do want to help people segment the paths that are going on, they do have to pop off the page. And in this case, the concept is, was, was okay, but their execution could have been a little bit better. Another form, and this is one where uh, we've got an information trailhead, but it's visual navigation, it's phones, it's TVs, it's tech, it's laundry. So, so here I know visually what these are and, and I should click on one of these, all right? Now you could have underneath here something like, you know, you know shop, you know, 3000 styles. I'm making stuff up because I don't know how many they have, shop you know, 20 different brands, shop, whatever, you know, or, or you know, wide selection to choose from so that they could click and maybe they can make it so that it pops a little bit more. But in general, if I'm coming to this kind of site and what they do is they actually rent the equipment, it's, it's, it's not, um, you don't buy them, you're actually renting this from them. So, by doing this, they, people are coming because they need a phone or they need a TV or they need whatever they need. They're making it really easy for somebody to be able to go down the appropriate path. All right. So moving on a little bit further, okay, you want your, your, your CTAs, your calls to action to be clear and, and absolutely meaningful. So let, let's talk about this. We always talk about above the fold. Right now, that's an old newspaper term where, you know, when, when the paper got folded, you, what you saw above was the most important stuff. That is still somewhat true, right? And, and having things above the fold does make sense, but you can also, there's also reasons to put things a little bit below if you have to let them 
know what you're doing on your site. If it's not clear what your site is about, and if it's not, if you can't make it meaningful for them in, in the words and the pictures, having a call to action above the fold where they don't already know what you're doing isn't necessarily helpful. So there are some caveats with this, all right? They'll also, we say there should be one CTA. Well, here's the thing. There should be one primary CTA, okay? Um, you can have secondary CTAs and tertiary CTAs, but, but you need to distinguish between your calls to action so that visually people know what makes sense. You know, and your CTA should be consistent. And we'll show you some examples in a moment of, of you know, where people have gone south on that. And then another one, we've seen this over and over again on long pages, and we've done this, you know, have your CTA repeat. Now, you don't want it to repeat like every, you know, two lines. I mean, we've got to apply a little common sense here, but the basic structure of a page where, where it's a selling page and you want someone to take action is, uh, you know, at the very top of it, you've got your unique selling proposition. You've got who you are, what you do, and in a way that your visitor actually cares about it. And then assuming that you can get that all up in the top, and this is true whether it's on mobile or on desktop, you can then have a call to action to either learn more, buy now, subscribe, or whatever it is. Right below that area, and this is where we get into the long pages, right below that is trust. Whenever you have a CTA, you wanna have some trust. It could be trust symbols like Better Business Bureau, it could be uh, your guarantees, it could be um, uh, just associations you belong to, number of customers, years in business, there's all sorts of things you can have for trust. Underneath that is another area where it talks about um, in more detail what your product or services does. Again, with a what's in it for me attitude, you have to explain it for the visitor. After you tell them what it is, you have earned the right to ask for a, you know, a CTA again, what you want them to do. Underneath the CTA, okay, is more trust. Now, the, this trust could be um, testimonials. It, it doesn't have to be the same kinds of trust over and over again. So basically what you're doing in, in, a, in a long page, and we've all seen like long form sales letters, all right, but this is true on any kind of long page, is it's what is it, what you want them to do, trust. More detail to learn more, okay, what you want them to do and trust, and then potentially even more detail. Now, even though I've said that you can have um, uh, calls to action after each explanation of what they do, depending upon the size of your page, it's okay to skip uh, from uh, the what you do over the call to action, give them trust, give them more detail, more, and then have a call to action with trust after, all right? So, because the last thing you wanna do is what we call greedy marketer syndrome, where like every time they scroll, it's like, buy now, buy now, buy now, only one left. You, you can't do that. So you do want to repeat your calls to action and, and, and you want to do it appropriately. And then towards the end, your calls to action should become more and more compelling. So people are motivated by two things. They're motivated by the, the desire to gain pleasure or the need to avoid pain. All right, and it's the, the whole pain and pleasure thing. And I, I think we've talked about this before, but I, I'm gonna date myself a little bit and just share this, this story. In the old days, when, when long distance service was, was an extra charge, so when, you, when people made a phone call, they actually had to pay money for long distance above and beyond whatever their bill was. So they were charged for that long distance. AT&T, which at the time was the telephone company, ran an ad on TV. And the ad showed grandma sitting there lonely, you know, it, you know, maybe with a cat, you know, kind of cold in her chair, looking miserable, you know, and the music was somber and it was terrible. And then what happened? The granddaughter calls, all right, and grandma lights up, the, the music got better, and their, their slogan at the time was reach out and touch somebody. Well, they did studies that in every market that they ran that, 
for the next 20 minutes when that ad ran in the, in the, on the TV, on that market, their revenue went through the roof on long distance services. And so what did that ad do? It showed the pain all right, of poor, lonely grandma. And then it talked about the pleasure of seeing grandma. So, so they got you either way. All right. So people are motivated by the two. So what I'm suggesting in your 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 CTAs is and, and this is a, a company culture thing. You know, do you start with the the powerful um, pain messages or do you start with the the um, the pleasure messages? This is what you're going to get if you if you do this. And then on the last one, if, if you start on positive. You go to negative with avoid, you know, procrastination, avoid whatever. If you don't do this, you, you need to add that urgency. So either you start with pleasure or you start with pain and then you reverse it because people act differently. People, some people respond better to the, the goal of pleasure or satisfaction. Other people respond better to avoiding pain. All right. And in all of that, you want it to be persuasive. So with that in mind, um, you know, we're going to talk about above the fold and not buried further down in the page. All right. So here's an example uh, of this site. And, you know, their stuff is, is down below. This is just not a good example whatsoever of, of getting people to take action. Because as I've said many times over the years, you don't want to make somebody think. And this is going to cause people to think. All right. And don't do that. Let it make it easy for someone to know what they're supposed to do. Another example, and it's not even like small organizations that do this, John Hopkins University. What do you want me to do here? Okay. Seriously, I have to scroll to figure it out. Did they really need to have that, uh, that picture be that big? And the answer is no. On the other hand, take a look at this. This is a, a, this is a, I know for a fact, this is a very high converting site. We designed it, right? So get a quote. If I'm in Connecticut and I'm looking for homeowner's insurance, right? This solves the problem for both the homeowner and it solves the problem for the agency because people want to get a quote. And I will tell you, this is a long form SEO page, no less. So the stuff that I talked about, how it repeats the call to action, there are the same call to action is, is two more times on this page further down. You know, in between the, the, the first one is, is pretty early up. And the last one is after all the SEO text, if somebody actually went that far to read it, right? So again, high converting, get a quote. You know, it answers the question, am I in the right place? How do I feel about this? What am I supposed to do here? And it makes it really simple what I'm supposed to do here. All right. So primary CTA, all right? If you give them uh, you know, multiple CTAs and you make them all visually equivalent, then what happens is you're confusing the visitor. They don't know what to do. So it's okay to have secondary or tertiary CTAs, but you need to deprecate them you know, or bury them a little bit or do something, ghost them, whatever terms you wanna use so that they're not you know, popping off the page. So for example, if you're selling something and you have a shop now or a buy now button, okay, you really shouldn't have a big learn more blinking button. I mean, I'm exaggerating, right? But, but if you want them to do the buy now, why in God's name would you have something that overshadows or worst case is equal to, and I gotta go, well, I wanted to buy now, but you know what? I think I'll learn more first, right? You, you know, now, having said that, there are cases where learn more would be the better primary CTA if you've got something that's very complicated, you know? And so you might have the primary be learn more, you know, and the secondary could be ready to buy, you know, that's okay. It depends on what you're selling or what your service is. Is it obvious? Do they need more information? And it's all about the visitor. I go back to, if you know why the visitor is there and what they want, and you know what they need to be able to make a decision in their process, then you can have the appropriate primary call to action. So an example here is, uh, is a site where their call to action is, is in um, this, I guess it's orange or yellowish color, all right? but. We've got buy now, check it out, show me, see the specs, 
All right, they visually made them the same. They uh, basically said that all of these things are important, okay? And so that's not necessarily true, okay? So, you know, like they've got on the top, Jim's gym bag, and you can buy now. On the Metro laptop use case, that's a buy now, and that's okay. But the next one, Safari Beano bags, okay, show me. Show me, it, it's not the same, all right? It shouldn't look the same. You should still allow someone to either buy now, you know, or shop. Maybe the right one would have been to shop the gym bag, shop all of them, as opposed to show me, buy now, see the steps. Hopefully that, that makes sense because, you know, from a visual standpoint, they've made all of those the same font, the same color, you know, and they, they've made them all equal in visual hierarchy and priority. As opposed to Upwork, okay, and look what they've done. Now, Now here's, they've got two audiences, right? I, I don't know how many of you use Upwork. I mean, we do, right, for different projects. But you've got find talent and find work. So where do they make their money? Yes, they need people to want to work through Upwork, but they make money by bringing people like us, like, you know, site tuners and you folks, to the marketplace to hire people. So the find talent is absolutely the primary versus find work, which is deprecated, you know. And so this is a, a good example of, of, you know, primary versus secondary. And it's also a really good example of, of speaking to your visitors and having a, uh, uh, an appropriate call to action or information trailhead for them to go down based upon what they were looking for. So this is indeed actually a really good example. So kudos to the uh, folks at Upwork. You also want them to be consistent, all right? And, and why is it consistent? Um, you want to train your visitors with color. So example, uh, on this next page here, their primary call to action is the green button. <laughs> Excuse me, and I know there's like a little bit of an eye test here, all right, because of the screenshot. But, you know, right here is their, is their start my uh, free trial. That's their primary. But look at all their secondaries. All their secondaries are blue, right? And so they blend into blue. But try it for free up in the top is also green. So what they've done is they're training their visitors with colors that green is the most important thing, okay? And blue is less important. And this works. We have tested this. Oh, Lord, I can't even tell you how many times we've tested this kind of thing. And, and training people with colors absolutely makes a difference in the, uh, in the conversion rate that they're going to, to, to get out of the site. All right, so let's go a step further, okay? And this is, you know, I, this is one page, okay? Learn more, learn more, learn more. It's white, it's orange, and it's blue, okay? So this is, and we see this all the time. Graphic designers will, will try to make something look pretty, okay? But visual design for conversion is about having something contrast and stand out and training the visitor. So by having them all the same color, <coughs> that would actually train the visitor. Do this, do this, do this. And so there's no confusion about what it is you want them to do. So different colors for the same exact call to action is a major no-no, all right? And again, this is something we've tested over and over and over again. All right, uh, here's another example. Start the free trial at the top, start the free trial at the bottom. They've made it sticky, okay? There's no confusion. They've made the color work. It pops off the page, you know, and, it, and you know exactly what you're going to get on this. All right, and you're going to get a free trial. Actually, let's go back to that slide for one second. All right, underneath start the free trial, and remember I talked about this. Uh, you know, this is what it is the learning app for kids. You know, this is what we want them to do, and right underneath it is trust. Right, this is a great example of what you're supposed to do when you're repeating over and over and over again. 
you know, the sequence. That is the sequence, folks. There is no magic to it. By doing this, it increases conversions. Excuse me. All right, moving on, all right? Uh, you wanna repeat your CDA several times before they reach the bottom of the page. So we're gonna show you an example of that. And this is um, uh, a, a website where uh, they have dictation software where the, uh, the, it's designed specifically for veterinarians. So the, you'll notice, even though it's almost like an eye test, you know, but we put the arrows, the call to action buttons are all the same color across this, right? And so, you know, and the words change, get on the fast track to happier veterinarians, all right? And now what we're talking about is the veterinarian dictation that will save you hours of chart work. So we're telling them what they're gonna get, we're telling them what they're gonna get. So this is pain avoidance down on the bottom because we're gonna save them time. This is the pleasure you know, be a happier veterinarian, have happier patients being the pets, right? So we went from the pleasure to the pain avoidance and the calls to action, all right, are the same color and consistent throughout it. And, you know, while I won't go into detail, this was a test that we just ran. And this, what you're seeing is the winning variation that did very nice on that and so on. Uh, uh, we're under an NDA, so I'm not going to tell you how well it did, but it did well, okay? That just gives you a flavor for it. And the same thing is true, okay, on, and this is just the snippets of the pages you went down, uh, you know, on the, on the mobile order. Start my free trial, start my free trial, start my free trial, okay? So the same things are true, whether it's desktop or it's mobile. All right, your last CTA. It's your last bite at the apple, folks, all right? Now, if you use any kind of, of heat mapping and recording, what you will see is on a lot of instances, people will scroll up and down and up and down and up and down on your page, which means that either they, you haven't provided the information that they needed to take action, right? Because it's all about them, it's not about you. And you haven't been persuasive enough. And so the, the, the persuasive elements, as you go further down on the page, need to be more and more persuasive, all right, so that, that it's more compelling as they get further and further down on the page, okay? So here's an example at the very bottom. Start this for now. Class closes in eight hours. and We've tested timers. Timers absolutely work, okay? Now, the timer doesn't work so well if the, the countdown is, you have 256 days and 13 hours and 12 seconds, you know, or 12 minutes, you know, that just doesn't work, right? So there has to be a sense of urgency to it. And so by having that sense of urgency uh, on your, on your um, and you can start with a sense of urgency or you can end with it, but if, if you're not starting with it, please make sure you end in some type of persuasive sense of urgency, you know, at the, at the end. And now, here we go, you know, and we go, there were other, uh, you know, get a whole year, that's nice, find our class, join today, all right? But it could have said, last chance to join today. Spaces are limited. I, you know, I'm making it up here. I don't know what the right answers are. But something that makes me go, I wanna be that person. You know, I need to do this today, all right? And I gotta be honest with you, join today, and, and I've, I've, I've had this discussion with clients in the past, Join today is not necessarily, you know, the uh, a great call to action, you know, because what what is this? This is classes where I'm, you know, going to learn something. Well, do I want to learn stuff? All right, a better call to action might have been start learning today, start your journey, your learning journey today. Something, right? Not just join today. Join today sounds like I don't know. I'm going to the gym, you know, or, or, or I don't know what it sounds like, but whatever it is, it's not compelling, okay? Uh, so stay away from words like submit, next, and more. You really want to have your calls to action be, um, be specific to what it is I'm getting. I mentioned a little bit on the previous page. You know, I, I don't want to join something. I don't want to submit something, okay? I don't, what I really want to do is I want the benefit. You want to have, whenever possible, 
your calls to action to actually be the benefit, all right? So what's the benefit here? You know, watch our free demos. This is the information trailhead at the top, all right? And watch it in action. So they've obviously said, all right, here's what you get. And they've given me benefits. They're, they're actually done this a really nice way. This is all the good stuff, right? Fill this out. They've got the arrow to say, do this, to watch our free demo. So this is what I'm going to get, right? And I watch it in action, which is kind of action oriented. And this is really clear versus they could have put in submit, right? Because they're submitting a form, right? There's a form. How many of you have seen submit on a form, right? Submit doesn't work. Well, actually, let me rephrase it. We've tested submit versus benefit oriented uh, calls to action. And it literally benefit oriented calls to action win 99 times out of 100 hands down. Every once in a while, you know, submit or next or something works. But when those work, it really begs the question, what else is wrong on the page that submit or next works? So I still don't think it's the right call to action. All right. It's got to flow with the page. All right. Moving on. Okay. Achieve more with, with Canva Pro. Create your account. Get started. It's free. All right. So again, it's not just get started, get started, it's free, right? You're trying to, to, um, to help someone move forward. We have a, a question from Jose, uh, uh, up, uh, top of the CTAs as milder, as a CTA as a bottom. Yeah, it, it, so, so Jose, it really, if you think about it this way, you don't know, why people are coming to your site per se, you know, who are the individual. You know in general why somebody is coming to a site, right? You, you know that they're coming for whatever it is you're, you're offering. But what you don't know is if, if person number one is, is an anxious person and person number two is laid, is laid back, you don't know who they are as people, right? So with that in mind, you know, a good rule of thumb is to have different types of, of persuasive elements on your page to take advantage of the different types of people that are there. Now, whether the, the call to action is, as you put it, milder versus uh, more, um, what's the right word, uh, more um, um, urgent, okay? Um, and that's not even the right word. Harsh is a bad word, so I don't want to use that. But there's nothing wrong with starting out with, with benefit-oriented, persuasive, you know, positive messaging. And then getting down on the last ones to fear of missing out FOMO. Like, if you don't take action now, this is what you're going to lose. So it's perfectly reasonable to mix those up. But I will tell you that's the kind of thing you need to test on, on any particular website or page. All right. Um, so what do we want them to do here? You know, Exit intents are great, right? And and you know we we always suggest you know um, you know pop ups when someone's leaving, but you have to make it persuasive. This is another call to action, all right? You know, need help? No problem. Chat with our sales experts or call us at this. Let's chat now. I will tell you um, because this is Salesforce.com, right? Chat with our sales experts makes sense. But if, if this was um, a, um, you know, uh, a car dealership, nobody wants to talk to a salesperson at a car dealership, right? I mean, you'd rather bang your head against the wall. But in context, like Salesforce people are going to, they're sales experts. That's why you want to talk to them. It makes sense. I just wanted to point that out just in case people didn't realize we would never say chat with our salespeople. We would never say that. But because this is salesforce.com and they are sales exports, experts, it makes sense. So you want to use it appropriately and you want to give them a real benefit of something that's in it for them. Okay. You know, and then look here, you know, looking for a better price, uh, pricing. Now, they're not saying here, and I love this, they're not saying, look, we'll give you a deal or get you a discount, right? What they're saying is get a personalized quote to match your needs, request a quote. Now, I might have said request your personalized quote, all right, because it's more about them, all right? But 
this is actually really good because you're giving them a reason to say, oh, I could get a better deal. They just need to know more. You know what? I was interested. Let me, let me find out. And that actually makes sense, you know, in, in context here. All right. One of my mantras, we talk about this all the time. Don't make your visitors think. All right, seriously, folks. Uh, again, you, you don't know how patient people are before they come to your site. And, and if they have to really hem and haw and think about it, you know what they're going to do? They're going to bounce, all right? The, the, you know, you really need to be much more persuasive and you need to solve their problem so that they take action. It's all about, again, aligning that visitor intent with what you deliver on the website that they can consume, you know, and the call to action so that it becomes natural for them to want to move forward. If you make them think too much, they are going to bounce, all right? So a couple examples here is, you know, you can show people previous purchases like Amazon. I've actually done this. You know, in Amazon, uh, you know, you, you've got your account and you buy something and you think, you know what, I'd like another one of those. I actually did that. Um, I did that for, uh, 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 I hate to bring up the pandemic again, but I did that for masks. I tried out a bunch of different masks to figure out which ones I liked. And then I, I found the one I liked and I bought 14 more of them so that, you know, when we were washing them, we had them for the family and it was great, right? Um, I also did it for a hat. I, I, I wish I had my hat here. <laughs> I bought a hat uh, with, with, and now you all know I'm goofy, but I bought a hat that had a light in it that when I walk at night, you know, I could see what was, I didn't have to carry a flashlight. It illuminated the, uh, the path in front of me. Well, my wife kept taking my hat because she liked it. So I bought a second one. I went back to Amazon. I didn't have to go search for it. I went to my orders and I was able to buy it. So it's really helpful to, to, you know, in, in context, show people, you know, what they looked at before, you know, if you can save a, a cart for people, even if they haven't bought from you, or if you can show them previous purchases, whatever it is, so that they don't have to go through the entire process all over again, make it easy for people so they don't have to think, all right, um, save more in your order here, all right, the grocery store, I want to buy the same things over and over and over again. This is a perfect example of where it works to say, would you like more of this, right? People also like to compare, all right? So, and, and we've, we've tested these comparisons. You've all seen it where you've got, um, you know, the different options that you could look at. And I'm going to uh, show you a couple of these right now. Um, Find the right product for you, you know, for a watch. They show you uh, what you get. Uh, people really hate missing out on things. So by, by looking at these two uh, different watches here, or these two different um, uh, bands here, you can figure out which one's the right one for you, all right? Um, and it just makes it a lot easier. Now, my phone died, literally died about a week ago. And I was absolutely on this screen, all right, uh, uh, although I didn't have an iPhone 12 or 13. I, I went and I, I'll admit it, I bought a 13, okay, uh, because I keep a phone for forever. But I absolutely did this. And what I compared it to is I compared it to the phone that I already had to see would it fit in the pocket well, was it bigger, was it smaller, what was the screen size? So I compared their model, the, the current models, you know, the different ones, the 13 and the different 13s versus the 12s. And I compared it to my existing one to figure out. So, so by allowing me to compare it to even an older model, I mean, this is really great UX. This is great user experience design. By allowing me to compare it to something that I can't buy, but I already had, it allowed, made it easier for me to be able to pick the phone I wanted without having to go to a store, right? That is great, great, great user design. As opposed to on the other side, you know, I don't even think I have to say anything, not so much, right? And so they, made, they did a really great job with this. All right, moving on. Make your content easy to scan. And I've shown examples of this in the past, right? But you want it to make it really easy that they can, at a glance, because people don't read, people are lazy. They, you know, not everyone, some people do read, but most people are lazy. They will not read 
All right. So you want to make it so that there's bullets, there's bold to things. That's what people read. They look for check boxes. They look for bullet. Now, the problem is you can also overdo it on the left hand side. All right. You know, they've got really nice bolded, better pet health scars here. What is pet health insurance? What purchase? So they've got some bolded stuff. On the other hand, what they've done on the right hand side as it goes down, yes, they've checked it and that is good. Okay. The lists are a little long and maybe they should have bolded one or two things even within the check boxes. And that would have really made this better. Now, having said that, this is really good. And so I'm not, I'm not complaining about this. I'm just showing you this is the type of example of what you should be doing. All right. Here's um, another thing. Again, we talked about sections for readability so that they can skin. You'll notice that we definitely bolded things. We definitely checkbox things. We made this very scannable for somebody to be able to figure out what to do. And, uh, you know, and, and again, there's some visual design in here. Like we've got a little infographic in the middle that, that just is trying to make people feel good, which is fine, all right? So that it shows the picture of, of the people in the waiting room to the vet with the with the with the with the dog and then the happy person leaving and and so you know we're trying to evoke emotion in here but you'll notice that we've made it really easy with the colors and, and it may be harder to see on the slides but each one of these sections has colors so that they pop out and it's just not one big mass as you're scrolling through this all right this, on the other hand, uh, and, and this is the kind of thing that people will read almost no matter what, but, but even with this, it, it gets hard to read all of this stuff. This is what we call an army of words marching around the page looking for meaning. This is hard. People can't read this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's overwhelming. They needed to bold things and check boxes and so on because that's how people think. All right. So overall, guys, all right, consistency, simplicity value, all right, all of these are what you're trying to do with your persuasive elements and your calls to action. You need to, to, to write for the visitor. You need to design for the visitor. You need to not make them think. So that in general is, is how you try to make your website and your calls to action more persuasive so that people will buy, subscribe, sign up for your newsletter, whatever it is you want them to do, right? That's how you do it. And as always, uh, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, yeah, if you'd like to connect with me, if we're not already connected, please feel free to, uh, to uh, join me up on LinkedIn. All right. And if we can be of help in any way, shape, or form, you know, and uh, if you haven't gotten a copy of the book and you'd like to read the book, I would recommend it. It's what this series of webinars are about. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, we're doing these about once a month now. And so we will be back in a month. In the meantime, I just want to thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you for all your kind words. And we will see you again shortly.